Hi, Ryan here again. Today I'm going to show you a little bit of differences by comparison of the Dirt Devil Dynamite to the Dyson DC33. Now the reason this is pretty much the only single cyclonic vacuum I have, so this would be a somewhat, hopefully, an equal comparison. Granted, this vacuum is a little bit smaller than this one, so it may think it's unfair, but, well, this is about as close to Paris as I'm going to get, but here we go. <clears throat> First off, this is Dirt Bell Dynamite. Let me see what model number it is. It is, let me see here, model, see if we can find it here. It says UD04, <clears throat> sorry, UD40220. <clears throat> this, obviously, DC33. That is the model number. Because it even says right there, DC33. Pretty easy to name it. I think Dyson has a little bit easier way to call it naming their vacuums because they might name them the model number, like DC23, DC24, DC25, you know, three successive vacuum. Anyway, the DC, uh, sorry, the Dirt Dog Dynamite is one of those cheap department store vacuums you get at Walmart. <clears throat> Walmart, Kmart, whatever. Got this from a friend who, in which, I think the vacuum was clogged. Well, the vacuum was clogged up. That's why it wasn't it wasn't working because the vacuum was clogged up full of dust. Uh, checked. I think I checked the little internal the, the internal hose or whatever here. And I checked it was full. Of, you know, a bunch of dust uh, clumped up in it. So I cleaned it out and it worked just fine. And it was actually one of my daily drivers. For quite a while, especially for cleaning the house because it was very powerful, nice and powerful air thing. It is bagless, and it was, you know, this is cheap little back from Walmart. Here is DC33. I bought this almost two years ago from Amazon.com for $318. This I got for free, so if I bought it, I probably would pay maybe $60. $318. I got it from Amazon, so I got it for a little bit of a bargain. If you bought, if I, could, I think if I would have bought this, buy this off the internet or Walmart, whatever, mainly Walmart, I'd probably pay at least maybe $50 to $60. There's a little bit of some dirt there. I try wiping this off for each back. I'm of wiping them off so that we would look good for the camera. Anyway. Anyway, this vacuum I'll probably pay at least maybe fifty six dollars for. This I would have paid three hundred and ninety nine dollars ninety nine cents. Plus tax, you'd probably be looking a little over four hundred dollars for this vacuum cleaner. Now some people might say that's expensive. Granted it is. These vacuums were never cheap. But Sometimes going a little bit extra, paying the extra dollar can pay off, especially for one of these vacuums. This vacuum is, to me, still of good quality. But I will tell you the comparison, the differences, some of the similarities and differences. So, first, let's compare the similarities. Both of them, of course, bagless. This has a clear band, so does this. They both claim to have HEPA filters. This is HEPA media. This doesn't say anything, but it does have a HEPA filter inside here. And I'll show you that a little bit later on. Both are lightweight, in my opinion, lightweight. The buttons are easy to reach. Um, lightweight, they're pretty good. They do a little bit decent job there for us, but everything. <coughs> anyway, both bagless are lightweight. Uh, I guess I'd say the only different similarities these vacuums have. Oh, they're, oh, before I forget, they also have automatic height adjustment. And a clean air design. They're both clean air vacuums. I forgot to mention that. Um, if I forget something and it comes to my head, I'll probably insert it into this video. Even if I'm halfway clean differences uh, to the differences comparison of this video. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Nope. I don't think so. <coughs> anyway. Here's some differences, though. 
first is vacuum. Obviously it says motor driven brush. That's true if you want to compare <clears throat> I guess in the most basic sense, yes, it is driven by the motor. It's driven by the main motor, such as this one. This is also driven by the main motor. This is both okay, these are both single motor vacuums. I just forget there we go, there's another there's another thing I have in common. They're both single motor vacuums. This vacuum claims it's ideal for carpets and bare floors. This says multi floor. So this is both suggesting they're great for multiple floor types. This I think would win, however. Here's why. In this vacuum, even though it says motor driven brush, and then it says ideal for carpets and bare floors, you can see well, right there, ideal for carpets and bare floors. It does not have the ability to shut the brush roll off. It does not have a separate motor for the brush roll, nor does it have a clutch or anything like that to shut the brush roll off when you're cleaning bare floors or anything like that. They do. Instead, they give you a scatter guard. I guess in the scatter guard is meant to prevent like stuff like sand or coffee grounds if you're vacuuming that up to prevent it from scattering over the floor. But I guess that's how they make it ideal for carpets and bare floors, I guess. But either way, this vacuum does not have a motor, does not have a separate motor, does not have a separate way to shut the brush off. The only way to shut the brush roll off is if you turn the motor off. Either that or disconnect the belt for the pulley. And no one's going to take tear apart, take off the bottom plane, off the belly, you know, belt for that. The Dyson claims multi floor. It has a clutch. You can see right here, even with a single motor unit, this has a clutch. And if you see, if I can bring this camera in, I apologize if the, if the video is poor quality or if it's poor video, I apologize. I'm working with a potato. Yeah, I'm working with a shitty phone. Anyway, obviously it says here, here, bare floors and carpets. Right now it's set to the carpet setting. That means is when you refine it back, the vacuum will automatically, the brush will automatically kick in and start spinning. The switch to shut the brush roll off, you switch it to bare floors, just like that. So that way, when you recline the vacuum, so when you recline the vacuum back for cleaning your bare floors, the brush roll will not turn on, it will stay off. When you want it back on carpet, put it in the upright position, switch to carpets, and then recline it back. That way it runs again. I always say put it in the upright position first because then that way, it's pretty much full for you know it's on carpets that way you know then nothing happen. While we're on the brush roll subject, this vacuum of course does not have any way to protect the belt if the vacuum somehow snags on a sock or a floor rod or whatever. This thing's going to keep trying to spin the brush roll. It's going to eat up that rug or it's going to snag that sock and it's, and it's still going to try to spin. That's going to burn up the belt and then you have to go and buy a new belt. You get that burning rubber smell. Very unpleasant. You have to either the belt breaks or whatever and you have to go buy a new belt. That's a big hassle and I know belt changes are a pain in the ass. On the dice, if you snag a sock, if it snags on a sock or farewells, you'll have a rationing. Let's go. Or something like that. Well, actually, it's a lot louder, and it's you'll you'll definitely notice. You'll definitely notice it goes or something like that. When it does, shut the vacuum off, put it up in position, pull out the stock, and then refine it back, turn it back on. You'll be fine. It's meant to do that because it'll say here it says noise. If it makes a loud noise, unplug or turn off the vacuum, unplug it, and remove the stock or whatever trail rug. It's a belt protection system. This does use a belt. But the clutch is designed not only to maintain, allow the vacuum to turn the brush roll on and off, but also protects the belt from unnecessary damage. Protects the belt in case of snags or something like that. The brush roll will stop and it'll start making that rushing noise. You turn the brush roll off, you, you pull out the sock, and you all that, and that helps reset the vacuum. So that way, the belt does not break. You do not have to replace it. 
obviously it's back in here. You need self self esteem. So let's try to find that in the store. This one, no belt changes are needed. You don't have to change the belt at all. You really don't have to do much anything to the belt. But should it break, take it to a Dyson dealer and they'll take care of it for you. This has a HEPA, both have HEPA filters. The only problem is that this HEPA filter is right inside this vacuum here. Let me show you. If you can see right here, there's the filter. That filter uh, might filter out the oxygens. It also acts as dust dirt container. This is why. Why? Because this is a single cyclonic machine. It's not dual cyclonic or multi cyclonic like the Dyson. With this, if you have a filter with the filters in this single cyclonic system, that filter is taking is trying to trap all the big dust and dirt particles. You know, all all kinds of shit that this, this thing picks up. So when you turn this on and you're running over the carpet or whatever with it, you might notice it becomes harder and harder and harder for it to pick up the carpet. You might have to do 10, 15, you know, four, five, six passes, whatever, just to pick up a piece of dirt or hair, or whatever. Very big hassle. On this system, the filter is off this is outside the machine. In here. It doesn't get dirty very quickly. See how it's the white around this side. Then it's a little bit darker, that's because it's out carbon emissions. Carbon emissions from the brushes. The eventually does wear down. That's natural, that's normal. Don't worry about it. That's like a natural part. Anyway, this is a multi-cyclonic system. That's the generic calling. They call it root cyclone technology. Right there. What this does is, instead of having a filter to try to trap all the dust particles and all, you know, and everything with a filter, this goes to a cyclone. Now, in this vacuum, like I said on here, unlike this vacuum where it picks up dirt through the brush roll and then goes up this little hose, and then into the pipe, and then goes into the bin where, where the big dirt gets swirled around, but all the small particles are going through that filter and getting trapped, and that's it gets closed up. This back in here will go through the brush roll or the hose, go through here, go through, eventually goes into the valve pipe, goes up this little tube, goes into the bin. Gets swirled around, sometimes dirt catches, but usually air swirls around the bin. It goes through the shroud, it goes through the shroud. Goes up to this little, it goes up to eight tech to those seven tech intercyclones. Those seven intercyclones are separating dirt and dust at speeds of maybe 120,000 G's. That's 120 times, I mean 120,000 times the force of gravity. That's a lot. That means is you don't lose suction power. You're not going to lose any suction power with this. The moment you turn it, it's going to have the same amount of power. The moment you turn it on, it's like the just like the day you ran it. And the thing is, filters do not need to be replaced. This, you have to replace the filter on this one. That filter style F2. These can cost $19, $20 each for a filter. This filter on a Dyson is $40. But, like I said, I time have filters. I would say for a Dyson, even though the Dyson has filters a little more expensive, around forty dollars, but they don't need to be replaced. Instead, if you want to buy an extra set of a, buy an extra pre motor and post motor head filter, that way you have an extra set of filters. So that way, if this needs the filters and this needs washed, you can switch out the filters, put in, in set aside, wash out the old filters, set aside, put them on the window sill dry, put in the new set <coughs> of filters that are dry and then put them in. That way you can use them so when they become dirty you can switch out the filters. Another big difference is the way the brush roll is designed. Well, on the top of the brush roll, on the dynamite it is a round brush roll. Dyson's helix. So I'll show you the helix side. But the brushes on here aren't very soft. aren't very stiff. They're soft. Now, to me, this is not exactly a positive thing to me, especially if dealing with carpet. 
because with carpet you need a decent brush brush roll in order to clean your carpet get that deep down dirt off the carpet. If the brushes aren't stiff enough, they're not going to get it. If it's going to skim all and skim the surface dirt, but they're not going to get the deep down dirt. Dyson is a little bit different. Well, a lot different. On here, it is a helix style brush roll, but the brushes are nice and firm. They're stiff. They're a little bit more aggressive. I consider this an advantage because with these, with the brushes, when you're spinning the carpets, it actually will help agitate your carpets better. Now, for certain stuff like Berber, like if it's loose, like a large loop Berber, where it's very loose, where the loops are very loose and they can become frayed or whatever, damaged by an agitator. In that case, turn a brush on the bare floors for loose. For loose, long loop Berber, turn the brush roll off. Now, if it's a tight loop Berber, like very tight loop, you know, you can find most other carpets, should be just fine. Anyway, but this brush roll is a lot more aggressive. It's going to get that deep down dirt. When I vacuum with this, I'm not even sure if I'm cleaning up the dirt with, you know, cleaning up pet hair. This, I know I'm getting pet hair. I know I'm getting all of it. Now, let me show you how. You can empty, now here's how you empty each vacuum. So it's a dynamite. Dynamite, you take the lid off, and you take it over to your garbage can, whatever. And you gotta empty this. And you gotta empty this in the bag. And that's not it. Well, you can empty the bag, put it back in, right? Wrong. You gotta take this out, and you gotta bang out all that dust. You see there, all that dust is going straight into the air. You're banging out the dust and all that. You see there, I'm using this because let's say you're banging against trash can, all that dust is going over the place, going all over your house. You see that they're all going through the air. That's because you're tapping out the filter. You see there. And see here, all that dust going into the air. That's not good. Not very good. Not good at all if you have allergies to asthma. If you have allergies to asthma, what good is this head filter going to do if you have to bang out the filter? Absolutely nothing. And you put this back on as you beat the shit out of the filter, get the dirt out. Put it back on. The Dyson is a lot more different. We take it over to the trash can, or in this case, the trash bag. Let me open up that a little bit. Take it over your bin and just empty out like that. And there you go. Now, for me, I like to clean out the dust on here. So if you want to wipe out the dust, take a nice, slightly damp rag or paper towel, whatever it is. I use this rag here. I use, I use this rag here. I'm just blowing out the, the bomb dust. But I take this little rag, little rag here and wipe out the dust. I try to give it a good wipe down. Sometimes when I clean out the filters, I give this thing a good wipe down. I take out the bin, I take out the cyclone assembly, and I really give it a really nice wipe down. Wipe it down really nice and good. I wipe, wipe off the shroud, the screen, everything. I wipe down the inside, that way, oops, that way it's nice and clean. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I like doing it because doing it because it makes it nice and clean. But when you're done, close up the lid and put it back on. That's it. You're done. No more having you don't have to bang out the filter. This make it every trash can.
press the button. Dirt drops out into the dirt drops out. You want to shake it, shake it a little bit, and shake in the dirt. And dirt. And dirt. When you're done here, and you take this, turn this one hand. I'll have to go back and go see what you later click. Let me give it. Do it like that. Here, nice quick. Put your pin back on. And there you go. That's all you have to do to it. You don't have to do anything. You just empty the bin, you take the bin out, you empty it, you, you know, you dump the contents, you put it back on. It's not like the dynamite where I take it out and dump the contents and smack the filter like crazy. To clean the filters, there are two filters. The free motor filter, which is right here. And this filter, a little bit discolored, due to use. That's normal. No big deal. Still, it's still clean, still nice and clean. You rinse that out once every three months. Let it dry for one whole day, that's 24 hours, it's one whole day. And you take it out, and you see, you know, that's sometimes we'll wipe down the inside here a little bit. A little bit of dust, nothing too serious, actually it's just this dust that comes out that's open after this goes to the pre-motor filter. So it's the F to take care of it. Anyway, here's the head filter. You take this out, you rinse it out every three months. Uh, you know, tap it out, let it dry for 24 hours. Again, one whole day. You rinse it out the same time you rinse out your pre-motor filter. You put your filter back on, like that. It's nice and quite nice and snug. You click the thing back on. Put your bin back on. You're good to go. Now the dynamite here doesn't have attachments, so there are models available that do have, there is a model available that does offer attachments, so it's not very long, but they were small. Here, you have a hose that's connected here, handle comes out of the one, and you got this, you got your combination tool, which has a built-in brush, and the stair tool, a crevice tool. Has one strips up, pull up dust, you know, pet hair, and all that from your furniture. I think I covered these in the official, the, my review, the DC33 uh, review. Uh, just look that up on YouTube. You know, look that up on my channel and watch that. It's about almost as long as this, but it will cover a lot of the features that I'll cover here. Um, one year warranty for the Dynamite, five year warranty for the Dyson. I'm not sure how much it costs for maintenance. I think six, well, let's see here, forty, a little over forty-two dollars, maybe whatever a year. This one, zero dollars a year. You're not, you'll, this thing will eventually pay for itself over time. It's a very nice machine. So, which would you choose, Dynamite or the Dyson? Well, I can already tell you right now. When I go to Job Corps, I'm taking a Dyson with me. That can stay. This is what I'm taking with me. Why? Because it's a better vacuum. It's going to last a long time. You know, it's going to last a long time. This is a well-built machine. You know, unlike today's Dirt Devils, like this one is just cheap, cheap back. This one is well-built. It's, it's built to last. You know, <clears throat> sure it's a little bit expensive at first, but this is a decent vacuum cleaner. Trust me, once you go with one, you're not going to go back, you probably won't go back to anything else. So, feel free to rate, comment, subscribe, tell me what features, if anything, I miss, or if you like a request of something, I'll see if I can do that. If you want to see particular parts of the Dyson, like say the hose, like if you want to see the hose in action or combination tool, just 
send me an email or send me a message or send me a comment on here and I'll do that for you. I'll try to do that for you. Or if I can cover other vacuums, if I can. If I can find one at a store, I'll try to demonstrate that for you. But until then, please feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.